Hidden across the American landscape, from the forests of Washington to the swamps of Florida, lay evidence of a mysterious people who had vanished without explanation. They were skilled hunters who faced down woolly mammoths with handcrafted weapons. They were master craftsmen who created some of the most sophisticated stone tools ever discovered. They were the true first Americans. Yet for generations, science refused to acknowledge they had ever existed. Long before Columbus set sail, before the great Aztec and Inca empires rose to power, before the mound builders of Cahokia shaped the Mississippi Valley, America belonged to a people whose very existence challenged everything scientists thought they knew about human migration. The evidence had been accumulating for decades, scattered across archaeological sites from coast to coast. Stone tools of unmistakable human manufacture appeared alongside the fossilized remains of Ice Age giants, creatures that had been extinct for over 10,000 years. Yet the scientific community, bound by rigid assumptions about human capabilities and migration patterns, dismissed these findings as contamination or misinterpretation. The intellectual gatekeepers of the early 20th century could not accept that Stone Age hunters possessed the skill and courage necessary to cross into an unknown continent and thrive in one of the most challenging environments human beings had ever encountered. Their worldview simply had no room for such remarkable ancestors. By the way, if you enjoy this sort of content and want to see more detailed breakdowns of our genetic ancestry, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Now, back to the video. Thirteen thousand years ago, North America was a landscape from another planet. Massive ice sheets, some reaching heights of two miles, pressed down across Canada and the northern United States. The climate fluctuated wildly as the last ice age slowly released its grip on the continent, and roaming across this alien terrain were creatures that today exist only in our nightmares and museum displays. Colombian mammoths, standing 14 feet tall at the shoulder with curved tusks longer than telephone poles, thundered across grasslands that stretched to every horizon. Giant ground sloths the size of modern elephants browsed on vegetation that no longer exists. Saber-toothed cats with seven-inch canine teeth stalked prey through forests of spruce and pine that extended far south of their current range. American cheetahs, faster than their African cousins, raced across plains where cornfields now grow. Into this world of giants stepped the Clovis people, small bands of hunter-gatherers whose courage and ingenuity allowed them not merely to survive, but to flourish across an entire continent in less than four centuries. Archaeological evidence reveals the breathtaking audacity of their lifestyle. At sites from Montana to Mexico, mammoth skeletons lie beside carefully crafted Clovis points, many still embedded in the massive bones where ancient hunters placed them. These were not scavengers opportunistically feeding on already dead carcasses. These were active predators who developed sophisticated strategies for bringing down the largest land animals on Earth. But the Clovis people were far more than mammoth hunters. They caught fish from ice-cold rivers, snared rabbits and other small game, gathered nuts and berries across vast seasonal ranges, and crafted bone needles for stitching warm clothing from animal hides. They lived in a world where winter could kill you in hours, where predators larger than modern grizzly bears prowled the darkness, where a simple injury could mean death for an entire family group. Yet, they thrived. For decades after Whiteman's discovery, the Clovis people remained archaeological phantoms, known only through their magnificent stone tools and the bones of their prey. Despite extensive searching, archaeologists found precious little human remains from this ancient culture. The acidic soils of most North American sites had dissolved away bones and organic materials, leaving behind only the most durable artifacts. Then, in 1968, construction workers near Wilsall, Montana, uncovered something extraordinary. 
The burial of an infant, surrounded by over 100 stone and bone artifacts, all stained with red ochre in what appeared to be an elaborate funeral ceremony. The child, who lived approximately 12,800 years ago, represented the only known human burial directly associated with Clovis culture. For nearly half a century, this precious discovery waited in museum storage while science developed the tools necessary to unlock its secrets. Finally, in 2014, advances in ancient DNA extraction allowed researchers to sequence the genome of this Clovis child, a boy who had died over 12 millennia ago, but whose genetic legacy would revolutionize our understanding of American prehistory. The results sent shockwaves through the scientific community. This infant's DNA revealed that he belonged to a population directly ancestral to virtually all Native American peoples throughout both North and South America. Genetic analysis suggested that approximately 80% of all modern Native Americans could trace their lineage back to this child's people. The implications were staggering. The Clovis culture wasn't just one of many early American groups. They were the primary ancestors of hundreds of millions of people across two continents. But just as scientists began to grasp the significance of this discovery, new research from South America would complicate the picture once again. While the genetic revelations dominated headlines, archaeologists continued uncovering evidence of the Clovis people's remarkable technological sophistication. Their signature spear points represented some of the most challenging stone tool manufacturing ever attempted by prehistoric peoples. Each Clovis point required extraordinary skill to create. The distinctive flute, a long thin groove extending up from the base, demanded a manufacturing technique so difficult that many points shattered during the final stage of production. Archaeological sites reveal numerous broken preforms, testament to the challenging nature of Clovis craftsmanship. But perhaps most remarkable was the geographic scope of Clovis technology. Raw material analysis reveals that these ancient craftsmen traveled extraordinary distances to obtain the finest stone for their tools. Clovis points found in the Great Plains were manufactured from jasper quarried in the Rocky Mountains, over 600 miles away. Tools discovered in Texas contained obsidian from sources in New Mexico while artifacts from the Atlantic coast incorporated materials from hundreds of miles inland. This wasn't casual stone gathering during seasonal migrations. It represented deliberate long-distance expeditions undertaken specifically to acquire superior raw materials. The Clovis people understood that high-quality stone meant the difference between life and death when facing a charging mammoth. They also engaged in a practice unknown among later Native American cultures, caching. Across North America, archaeologists have discovered over 20 buried collections of Clovis tools, carefully concealed for future retrieval. These caches contain some of the finest stonework ever discovered in the Americas. Pristine points and tools that appear never to have been used, stored away like treasure against future need. Around 12,600 years ago, something dramatic occurred across North America. The distinctive Clovis tool tradition abruptly disappeared from the archaeological record. Sites that had yielded hundreds of Clovis points suddenly contained entirely different tool types. The sophisticated manufacturing techniques that had defined this culture for centuries simply vanished. What caused this sudden transformation? The answer lies in the rapidly changing world around them. The Pleistocene epoch was ending, bringing dramatic climate shifts that transformed the entire continent. Rising temperatures melted the massive ice sheets, fundamentally altering weather patterns and ecosystems. Many of the giant animals that had defined the Clovis world began disappearing. Not just the mammoths and mastodons they hunted, but entire communities of megafauna that had co-evolved over millions of years. Some researchers have proposed that the Clovis people themselves contributed to these extinctions through overhunting. But the reality appears far more complex. Climate change, habitat loss, and human predation likely combined to push vulnerable species past their survival threshold. 
The Clovis people found themselves masters of a world that was rapidly ceasing to exist, yet they didn't simply vanish. Instead, they adapted. Archaeological evidence suggests that Clovis technology evolved into the various point styles that characterized later Paleo-Indian cultures. Folsom points in the Great Plains, Cumberland points in the Southeast, and numerous other regional traditions. The people themselves continued, but their way of life transformed to meet the challenges of a post-Ice Age world. Recent genetic studies support this continuity. DNA extracted from Native American populations across the Americas consistently shows links to the ancient Clovis genome, confirming that these remarkable people were indeed the primary ancestors of the indigenous populations that Europeans would encounter thousands of years later. But what investigators discovered in the mountains of Colombia would soon reveal that the Clovis people weren't the only mysterious population to inhabit the ancient Americas. High in the Colombian Andes, at an altitude of 8,500 feet above sea level, lies a windswept plateau that once harbored one of archaeology's most puzzling mysteries. The Bogota Altiplano, with its thin air and challenging climate, seems an unlikely place for ancient human habitation. Yet recent excavations at the Chequua site have revealed evidence of people who lived there 6,000 years ago long after the Clovis culture had vanished, but still millennia before the rise of the great Andean civilizations. These highland hunter-gatherers, dubbed the Cheka people by researchers, adapted to life in one of South America's most demanding environments. They hunted deer and small mammals across high grasslands, fished in cold mountain streams, and gathered wild plants that could survive the harsh conditions. Without pottery or metal tools, they crafted their entire material culture from stone, bone, and organic materials that have long since decayed. Archaeological evidence suggests they lived in small, closely-knit groups. Among seven individuals studied, researchers identified four pairs of close relatives, siblings and cousins who shared the challenging mountain environment. Five were males, all carrying the same Y-chromosome lineage common among Native Americans. Their mitochondrial DNA showed greater diversity, suggesting they maintained connections with other groups despite their geographic isolation. But when scientists extracted ancient DNA from these mountain dwellers, they discovered something that defied all expectations. The Cheka people's genetic signature matched no known population, ancient or modern. They weren't related to the Clovis people of North America. They showed no special connection to other early South American populations. They didn't even share particular affinity with modern Andean peoples. Instead, they appeared to represent a completely separate lineage, a ghost population that had somehow reached South America independently and maintained genetic isolation for thousands of years. This discovery shattered the simple narrative of American peopling. Rather than a single migration wave that gave rise to all Native American populations, the genetic evidence now suggested multiple distinct groups had reached the Americas, lived side by side for millennia, and sometimes replaced each other in ways researchers are only beginning to understand. The discovery of the Cheka people alongside the revolutionary findings about Clovis ancestry has shattered the simple story of American prehistory. Instead of one migration wave populating two vast continents, we now see a complex tapestry of separate lineages arriving at different times, some becoming ancestors to millions, others vanishing without descendants. Yet their legacy endures in ways that transcend genetics. Today, across the Americas from Alaska to Chile, millions of people carry within their cells the DNA of mammoth hunters and mountain survivors. The story of America's secret first peoples reminds us that we are all descendants of the ultimate survivors. People who crossed unknown continents, faced down Ice Age predators, and developed the sophisticated technologies necessary to thrive in environments that would challenge us even today. Their strength flows through our veins. Their capacity for innovation and adaptation remains our biological inheritance. If you want to watch another interesting video about our unique genetic heritage, check out our video on the Melungeon people of Appalachia, a group that was intentionally hidden by the American government for decades. This was Ancestry Code, and as always, thanks for watching.